Good morning, peeps. Some on my screen. Oh, that's my clock. I'm tweaking, y'all. It's too late in the day to be tweaking. But, how y'all doing today? You doing good? That's good. How I'm doing? I'm doing good, though. Yeah. So, <laughs> today is Tuesday, October the 11th. It's 207 in the PM. 207, y'all. So I just finished up homeschooling. Morning between 1 30 and 2 o'clock I finished. Hey sweetie, you wanna say hey to the peeps? Hey. You just woke up. Are you going? You sleepwalking? So yeah, today Tuesday, and I help, I'm homeschooling, so what that tell y'all? That mean they didn't strike. That mean I didn't find out to like 12.30 in the a.m. that they weren't striking. Why they do that to the people? Why they wait, why they, why they wait, why did they make us wait so long to tell us that the son, I think he was disappointed. <laughs> it don't bother me. Because I'm like, he's like, I, I told him, I, I'm like, it don't really bother me, I guess. But he have to get out there, catch buses, go to classes. Y'all just see how my hair be shedding. It got washed last night. Sharon twisted it. This part right here aggravating me. Trying to get this piece of hair. I don't think she'd be really getting all my loose ends. And when I do it, I when I start messing with it, I have to get, I have to do it. I don't think she'd be wanna pull with my hair like that. So yeah, that's what we. So they. Chicago didn't strike y'all and he was talking my son was talking about it might be like for two months they only was gonna do it for 10 days but I guess they got what they was looking for they seem like they strike almost every year so that's good and, um, what I'm doing today I gotta cook this week so around 2 30 I'm gonna start cooking and um I'm gonna do a story time but before I start my story time she ain't found her baby pictures <laughs> she wants y'all to see her baby pictures and I don't know how old she was but okay they got a they got a they got a, a year on here bam oh 2003 she was one July, August, September, October, 12, 13, 14, 15. Two 15 months. Wow. Baby Shen. Baby Shen. 15 months, y'all. And that's my oldest daughter right there. And Baby Shen, y'all. Don't she still look the same? Mm. Give that smile. Mm. He go baby Shen. That's the other face, y'all. He go Kara. And I don't know how old Kara was on here. How old was Kara on here? 2003. Kara was born in 96. So she was seven? Mm -hmm. Wow. And she... How old is Kara now? 20? Mm -hmm. So, baby Shen. Kyra, seven years old, and my oldest daughter right here. And then, <laughs> oh, this July. This was a different time. Mm -hmm. You had just turned one. So she got baby Shan again, y'all. She still looks the same, though. Yep. 
I got it's Chuck E. Cheese. The year. So yeah. We gotta frame them now, she answered. She just found them. Here you go. Danke. So yeah, I'm about to do a story time. I didn't really do nothing over the weekend. We we still watching Criminal Minds and Merlin. Friday I get my grandbabies. Ain't too much going on. So let's get right into this because two thirty I gotta start cooking. I be trying my schedule for cooking when it's my week. Well, air all is kind of, I kind of got them on the same schedule for cooking. But we don't, we try not to eat no later than four o'clock. But that's, that's just how I was raised. I was raised, man, when we got out of school, my mama would have dinner. Around the school, my mama would have dinner already made. And I think we got out like around 2.30 in the p.m., and then I'll be made, but we probably wouldn't eat till like 3 o'clock or something. So, I just know by 7 o'clock in the p.m., the kitchen was off limits. Lights off in the kitchen, cleaned up. It's a wrap, unless you're going to get some water. But other than that, no eating. It was over. So, I kind of picked up a lot of things my mama did when I was growing up as far as stuff like that. But, um... We all eat at the same time, and we don't eat in our rooms. My mama didn't play that. I don't do that. And if you didn't eat what she cooked, you didn't eat. <laughs> we ain't have it like that. And that's the same story over here. If you don't, I normally try to cook what they eat, but sometimes it's a hit and miss. Hey, fix a sandwich. That's about good as it get. Um, so yeah, and it's basically the same thing, wash dishes, we all eat at the same time, and all that. So let me get right into this story time, the hubby getting ready to go get the sunny. Yeah, so this story time, I'm still in chapter 11, y'all already know, but this topic is... Five ways to pray for your adult children to be good parents. Good parents. Number one. You ready? You sure? Okay, come on. Pray that they will recognize their children as a gift from God. That's deep. Because... I'm not gonna always. I'm not gonna say I always thought like that. I, I really didn't have a thought about it. I just get caught up in the moment, and that's just how I, I will feel. But now I, I look at it like that today. I've been looking like I've been looking at it like that for a while now. But in the beginning, having kids at 19 and had another one, like 20, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and you know, 20, 20. 19, 23, 24, 25, yeah, 26. So, I wasn't on that level yet. <laughs> I wasn't there. So, but it's good for young folks to come into this knowing that. Thinking. And that scripture came from, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Psalms 12073 because everybody can't have children and want children. So it's a blessing. Number two, remember this is five ways to pray your adult children to be good parents. Number two, pray that pray that they would train up their children in the ways of the Lord. Very, very, very important. Very. And that comes from the scripture. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22 and Proverbs, 6. Proverbs, y'all. Number three. 
Pray that they would teach their children with love and not anger. Woo! That was a mouthful right there. With love and not anger. Let's deep. And that scripture comes from, and, and you fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Bring them up in the training and admonition of who? The Lord. Man. Ephesians 6 and 4. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath. You say mothers, you say fathers. <laughs> I guess because fathers, I think, really supposed to be the disciplinary of the family. I really believe that. We're raising kids already. I think women, we work out of too many emotions and maybe we can over-dramatize over some situations. Probably it's not that serious and just probably not even have our emotions under control. We already be having hormonal issues and it don't take much to aggravate us and irritate us. And then you get a baby, a child, a toddler, a teenager. <laughs> And it just sent you, it just sent us places before you know it, bam. Get a stench cord, pop it with a broom. Yeah, back in the day, my generation get a hit with a hattie board. <laughs> an iron, a pot, a skillet from a female. <laughs> so I really, really believe this, because when you read the Bible, he's speaking to men for the most part. And he said, fathers, raise your children in admonition and the teaching of the Lord. So I think all that, the training, the disciplining, and all that should come from the man. I mean, we have our input, okay? But whooping and all that type of stuff, I don't think females should do that. I think the men should handle uh, spare the wild, spoil the child type of situation because we'll snap off. <laughs> <sighs> Number four. Pray that they will be diligent and wise to discipline their children. Now that's the key word. I hear diligent, but I also heard wise. He who spares his rod hates his son. And the Bible said it, not me. But he who loves him disciplines him properly, though. It's a proper way to discipline your child. Now, I know some people don't believe in spanking. It's a difference between spanking and beating and just get all caught up in your anger. So, I think that's why men should do it because I think men have more control over their emotions and stuff. To me, that's what I believe. And that's what I believe. Donnie McClurkey. Proverbs, okay, that come from Proverbs 13 to 24, in case y'all don't believe it, it's in the Bible. Uh, number five, people, pray that they will walk in obedience to God's ways in raising their children, so their prayers will be answered. Wow, so, the, so their prayers, it's a cause and effect. Uh, cause raise your children in obedience effects so your prayers can be answered deep scripture and whatever we ask we receive from him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight in his sight first john new testament 322 wow and that's the end of that part. The other section I'm going to do is 10 ways to pray for your grandchildren. A lot of y'all probably ain't got that yet. But it's never too late to start putting it. When you're praying for your children, pray for you, pray, pray, pray for the next generation and next generation because God hear it. He hearing it. And if he know you're stepping out on faith and you going there, he, 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 he like, I got that prayer. Like he he they, he he had your tears. I I got that prayer. I heard that prayer. You know it's never too early to pray. 
never too late to pray even when they already grown and um and you just coming into the knowledge and the understanding of god it's never too late to start praying like that so yeah i um Shane, you so rude burping in my video i don't know how to feel about that so yeah that's the end of that topic and i think that was it was five ways but them are i mean the five sums up the whole thing right there you know like you got everything covered with them five prayers um and them verses and um i also think proverbs is a really good book um to get a lot of wisdom from and a lot of instruction and guidance from so yeah and I hope y'all enjoyed that. I been I know I've been trying to come down with something, but I think my immune system doing what it's supposed to do. But I still have like some little, you know, runny nose and stuff. And I be feeling it all in my throat. I got better because at first my glance was, was my glance was swole. So that done went down. The only thing I made some homemade, uh, I made some homemade vapor rub, um, maybe like two weeks ago, two weeks, I think I'm thinking two weeks ago, and, uh, but all I put in it, I just be, I mean, I put beeswax in it, um, olive oil, vitamin E or um they're trying to get all the oils together I don't think I put Jehovah oil in it and yeah I think that's it and then I put like peppermint in it I put lemon in it cause you know lemon is good for your throat peppermint good for your throat peppermint tea all that so them the essential oils i was going for peppermint lemon i put eucalyptus in it because they have them in cough drops i got some i got some eucalyptus um essential oil oh it's not over here I put that in it. I put the rest of my menthol in it. Cause menthol, that's being like the vapor rub, Vicks vapor rub, help open you up and everything. I put, um, yes, liquid. Yeah, I put that in there. And, um, I think that's it. I, was, I think that's it. But I looked up uh, ways, different oils that you could put in it. It's a lot of different other kind of oils that you can add to it. Like, um, man, it was one of them. And I got, I'm like, man, I would have knew that. I would have put that in there too. And it works really, really. Shan, it works really, really good. Because when my glands, I, I felt it like swelling and getting a knot right there. And I just start rubbing it like for two. Go, go bring me my homemade uh, vapor rub. I just start rubbing it up under my chin, rubbing up under my nose. You definitely can't like swallow it. Even though we used to, my mama used to put big ass in our mouth and we would swallow that. And I used to do my kids like that. But I don't, I don't do that with my homemade stuff. I, I feel like I put enough good ingredients in there that it's going to do what it do up. It's going to break that. It's going to liquefy cold. It's going to open you up. So, yeah. I just made this. What's, what's happening, Shane? Yeah, it smells good, though. But that's the look. Yeah. And it lasts a long time. It lasts a real long time. I think it lasts me for like, man, it might last me a couple of winters. And it's good. And I made my daughter some in a little jar. Like the jars I make our deodorant. Well, she already make our deodorant in. 
I made her song for the babies and stuff. Like the can, like the small, like the jar of the small uh, Vicks vapor rub. That's how. That's like the size of her jar that I gave. Made her song. Uh, yeah, I think was it from this batch or I made her whole new batch. Yeah, but it works, y'all. And another thing that I do, like when I have like little tension headaches or whatever you want to call them, because I keep my little peppermint essential oil right here. All I do is sniff it. Y'all remember the big vapor thing you put in your nose and you sniff it and it open you up? But this even deep because it's good for like, I mean, seriously. I just like, I do this. And I do this. Take a good will when I have a headache. And over a period of time, before the day over with, it's gone. It's gone. So I keep this. It's, this this is a very handy uh, essential oil to have for stuff. For just stuff. Like we use it for mosquito bites, tea tree oil too. And, um, I got my tea tree oil here because. We had some bugs up in here and they was biting on them or something. And what I do, and I got one, I here got one too. And I just put some tea tree oil on it, dip it on my hand even though it's strong, it's good. This is like an antibiotic for stuff. Even if you got like a toothache, all you got to do is dab your, um, this is good. This is another thing to keep on hand, on hand. On here, since we don't take medicines up in here and do all that stuff, I just keep a lot of stuff. Uh, got my lemon, I get them from Vitamin Shop, and my rose hip five face. It's a good moisturizer agent for your face. I, I haven't been using it for the summer, but. It's almost gone. I don't know if y'all can see that. But it's almost gone. And they sell it in vitamin shop now. When I was there, I synced it at vitamin shop. So I'm going to buy another one. Arena just used some. Eddie and my rosemary. This is what I put in my castor oil for my hair. It's supposed to you know, make it stronger or whatever. And my other rosemary. I didn't know I, I, yeah. I, I just, the ones I use a lot, I just kind of stock up on. So, yeah, I just keep them right here. On the side, I keep helping me first because that's for my, my headaches or whatever. Or if I feel like I'm getting congested in my eye drops and teach you or uh, most of this was in my room. But them bugs, I don't know. So, yeah. So, on that note, it's 2.30. I'm getting ready to let y'all go. And I hope everybody today is Tuesday for me. But I'm going to put this video up tomorrow. And I hope everybody have a blessed two Wednesday. Safe Wednesday. And a productive Wednesday. Yeah. I bought me a rack like the hubby, the hubby got. In the basement, I bought me one because I ain't have enough room in my closet for my shirts. So I um was doing that last night, putting my shirts on hangers and putting them on the rack. And I bought some crates to put the odds and ends in and sat that on my rack too. I'll show y'all that in my next video. That what I had did last night, organizing some stuff, y'all. So on that note, I'm out. And again, be safe out here, be wise out here, and be productive. Use your energy, y'all. God give it to us. Let's work it. Because, man. <laughs> on that note, peace and love. Share some. And I'll see y'all in my next video. I holla. Bye, y'all.